Hi there, I'm Dave Marks. Let's take a look at the bass solo from the Ealing Feeling. The bass solo here is quite short, it's only 8 bars long, and it's built of four very specific ideas. Each idea has one bar of the groove followed by a one bar lick. So each of the groove sections are the same as the kind of thing you played elsewhere in the tune, and then the licks are where you kind of make your own statement with it. Okay, so the first bar in phrase one is over C minor seven, and it's just your disco octaves. It's the thing we've been using the whole way through the rest of the tune. And then with that little muted note on the end. Second bar, we have a lick in E flat minor. I'll do a close-up so you can see the hand position in this one. Starting with my fourth finger on the sixth fret, and I play. So it's just E flat minor pentatonic. That kind of shape, but using this lick. And all the way through, I'm using my fourth finger for all the notes that are on the sixth fret, and my first finger for all the notes that are on the fourth. The second phrase of the solo, now we're on to an A flat major 7 chord for the first bar. So we play just our ordinary disco octaves as we had before. This next lick is probably my favourite lick in the whole tune, and it goes like this. So it's a nice little phrase. Uh, the chord says G7, I've kind of given it G7 and put a sharp 5 in there as well. It specifically uses the idea of an augmented triad, which is stacked major thirds. So I'll do a close-up so you can see the hand position in this one. You have to be careful to get the articulation right in this as well. We have a hammer on from the eighth fret to the tenth fret. Then play the ninth fret with the second finger. Then the eighth fret with the first finger. And then there's a pull off from the tenth fret to the eighth to the seventh. slightly weird thing is that when you go up in this position you're playing the eighth fret there with your first finger as soon as you put your fourth finger down to do the pull off your first finger moves down to the seventh fret from there I play the tenth fret of the D string and then just descend a G major arpeggio In that lick, watch out for the articulations. It's quite a fast lick, but because I mix up hammer-ons and pull-offs, and particularly the last three notes, they're a rake. I'm basically taking finger one here. In fact, finger two I'm using. Take finger two and drag it down across those last three notes. So instead of having three movements to get the notes out, I'm only using one movement dragged across. So phrase number three uh, starts with C minor, exact same as bar one. So we just have that disco octave with the little muted note at the end. We then have another lick over E flat minor. Now the previous lick went and this one goes. So both of them finish on a G flat. The first lick ended up high, this one ends down low. So I'll do a close up of the hand shape so you can see. So we start on the sixth fret with the fourth finger. We play 6th fret to 4th, same again on the E string, and then finish on that G flat on the 2nd fret. And then finally we have a little muted note and then a slide into that B flat on the 6th fret. Phrase number 4, we're back to the A flat chord again. And this time, it's the only time when I do a variation in the first bar. So in this one, it's uh, it's kind of similar to Boogie on Reggae Woman by um, Stevie Wonder. Has that kind of thing. So in this, I play the disco octave twice, then a muted note, and then a slide up to a note. So I'm sliding B flat to C and catching E flat up in the sixth fret. 
Then I mimic that idea one string up. So you get that slide idea from the fourth finger. Happening both times. I'll do a close up for you. So the very last bar we're playing over the G7 chord again. It starts with uh, four G 16th notes. And then I did three muted notes on the A string. Just trying to get a bit more punch out of them rather than the, the muted notes on the D string are slightly smaller sounding. And then I play a slide from F to G, then a high B flat, and then back down to G. From there, I just come off and back down into the bass line. Here's how the bass solo looks when you play it all the way through. 